Thor here, doing another drive video. I was uh, in the Dragons Q&A the other night, which if you don't know, Dragons membership is uh, kind of a monthly meeting where sometimes we have a question and answer where a group of men will work out certain issues in their lives with another group of men that's very understanding and have experience. And they leverage each other's experience and knowledge uh, with each other so they can better their lives. This is something that's been handed down uh, traditionally in uh, organizations or clubs throughout history uh, with men. And it came up that somebody has a job. Now, it's a good job. It pays well. But the work is kind of boring and it's kind of un... It's not fun work. It's, it's not satisfying work. It's not work that you would call fulfilling from certain people's perspective. And the struggle is, needed to come up with a hustle, felt a lot of pressure to come up with a hustle to get away from 9 to 5. Got it. We all would like to do that. But the thing is, it makes good money. And that money can be used, saved, and leveraged. And until you can get something better. So the conversation revolved around, you know, men have had to struggle with crappy, horrible jobs for centuries. It started way back with when we hunted. We'd go for a hunt for two, maybe three weeks, and sometimes we'd come back with very little things, very difficult weather, cold, facing the elements, maybe even injury, infection, and death. Do you think they were very fulfilled by those hunts? No. Uh, was was it good happy times? Well, you could have some enjoyment, but here's the key. Even though those men would do certain jobs, there's lots of jobs that are distasteful, most of it resides within your head. What does that mean, Thor? Well, it means that you don't always choose the work that you do, but you always choose how you approach the work that you do. Or in more simple terms, you don't choose the work you do, but you choose how you're going, how to do the work you're going to do. You choose in your head. You should be able to find some level of enjoyment and even passion about even the most mundane and crappy job. There is something there. And when we start to dissect these things, lo and behold, parts of the job are actually challenging, kind of fun, and while they may not be fulfilling, they offer some enjoyment. And then there's the future promise of satisfaction because the pay is good enough that it allows me a shortcut to leveraging a hustle, a private job, ownership, investment. So the long and the short of it was the man felt pressure not just him, but many, to leave a pretty good job that pays well, they just wasn't fulfilled by it. I could tell you this, every job I've ever worked, the only reason I get fulfillment by it was because I chose to have that. And I chose to have it with the people I worked with. And or personal goals that I set for myself and satisfied those within that context. It never came to me from the actual work, the management, the customers. It never came from those sources. It had to be filtered through me and how I perceived it. I changed my perception. I changed the entire work. So remember, you don't always choose the work that you're going to do, but you always choose the approach to doing the work that you're doing. And that's kind of the message that we got. And the guys really liked it. I think you'd really like it too. Next time you're uh, going to your job, no matter how mundane or how small, remember, it's just a stepping stone. And uh, you can get a lot of learning from it and enjoyment from doing it. The point is, is get out there and get it done. Until next time, skull. Masculinity is in crisis. What are we to do? We need to acquire a dominant masculine presence. 
now available on Amazon. Masculinity is in crisis. Men's masculine behaviors and traits have been suppressed by popular culture. Why has it become so popular to shame, guilt, insult, masculinity, and masculine behaviors? After 50 to 70 years of this has resulted in a very large subset of men who have become weak, useless, and crisis. Pathetic state for boys and men that leads to depression and violent despair. A dominant masculine presence addresses this very dilemma for the individual man and it firmly establishes why this is what is desperately needed by the individual man today. In this book, clearly defined masculine traits and behaviors and the emotional durability provided by traditional masculinity are presented as a guide to what every man should embed into his identity. Putting these principles and behaviors into practice will motivate and direct your path step to step to create for yourself an authentic dominant masculine presence.